You have a message, a story, a passion, a product, or a service that's going to change the world. You already know that. But to really get it out into the world, you need to get paid. You need to be appropriately compensated for the great work that you're doing in the world. And for you to be appropriately compensated for the great work that you're doing in the world, you need to get someone to say yes. And for you to get someone to say yes, you need to communicate not the features of your product, service, message, story, or, or service, but you need to communicate the benefits. Hey, on today's show, we're going to be talking about how to grab your prospects by their eyeballs and bring them into your message so that they stay, pay, and refer. Ed Talks Live is next. All right, hey, what's up? Welcome to the show. My name is Ed Rush, five-time number one best-selling author, your host for the most positive place on the planet for insanely implementable ideas. Some of you noticed that today we are on episode 50. Man, I have like liver spots bursting on my arms. It feels, it feels like it's been, I mean, we've only been at this for like two and a half months. It feels like it's been 50 years with all the changes that have happened in the world. Thank you so much to you who have been with me from episode one all the way until now. I'm gonna mention some of you uh, in chat. We used to have a term in the Marines uh, called the plank holder. The plank holder was the person who had been in the squadron the longest. Usually that wasn't the commanding officer or the executive officer. Usually it was like a, a captain who had been there for like four or five years uh, in, in, in the squadron and was just leaving at the very end of a long tour. That was the plank holder, the person who had been there the longest. And we've got several plank holders in chat right now. Uh, so welcome to those of you who've been with us for since the beginning. Welcome to those of you who are joining us uh, right now. Listen, today's show is going to, is designed to show you how to connect with your market so that they are thrilled to open up their uh, pocketbooks or, or uh, wallets and invest in what you have to offer. By the way, if you haven't been with us before, chat is on the right-hand side on YouTube. Please jump in, tell us who you are, where you're from, what you do. Uh, if you are uh, new especially, and if you're on Facebook or Twitter, that's going to be right below you. Uh, in the comments section. So without any further ado, let me jump into the comments and say hello. Barry, what's going on, man? Uh, Barry's been with us since the beginning, man. One of the stalwarts. Uh, episode 50 plus ultimate speaker. Wow, congratulations, Professor Rush. Um, thank you, Jim Butts. Good to see you as well. <laughs> uh, it's, it's hot today. Yeah, it is hot, uh, Jim. Um, 50th episode. You're the man. He hasn't missed any yet. Uh, I, so I said there would be 90, I would do it for 90 days, uh, Dennis, that's actually next week is the end of the, of 90 days. Uh, but that doesn't include the weekends, but I'm going to keep going with Ed Talks live, uh, after the 90 day window. It's just, we're not going to do it every day. I'm going to probably do it like every Tuesday or Thursday, but we'll, more to come on the actual show uh, schedule. By the way, some of you who are my new coaching members, uh, you're going to be coming on as guests on Ed Talks live soon. Uh, if you're interested in learning how to get a little coaching, let me know. Uh, Denise says, hello. Glenda, good to see you as well. Um, let's see, who did I miss? Gina, what's going on? Welcome to, to, to um, uh, the show uh, again. Um, let me see, what did you say? I fell off the implementation wagon. Come on, it's all right, it's all right. I had to move furniture instead of, that's still implementation. Salih, good to see you as well. Mary Jo, just talking to Delisa about you, getting answers to all of your questions. Uh, Charlie, good to see you as well. Welcome back. Michael Fortin, my man copywriting guru, Michael Ford. Hey, Arthur, welcome to the show. Um, congratulations, Salee. I was just invited to speak at the Women's World Conference in Atlanta next year. You're one of the first people I've heard of getting speaking deals. Congratulations, I'm proud of you. Good for you, and now that, you've, now that you're an Ultimate Speaker graduate, uh, you know how to get it done. By the way, I have a great surprise for you. Um, on the screen below you, you will see a website, edrush.com slash pivot. This week, actually this Thursday, literally right after Ed Talks Live, I'm gonna jump onto Zoom and show you the seven different ways uh, that the world has completely changed because of the global reset. Uh, what happened in 2020, you're gonna hear me talk about this for the next few weeks. What happened in 2020 was as predictable as though you could set your watch by it. But at the same time, with the crisis, and the difficulty that hit the world, the door, the window opened up for you to finally get your message and your market out there. 
For those of you who were with me yesterday, I talked in detail about that. I'm going to continue talking about this. The bottom line is that the world woke up and they're ready to hear from you. And on Thursday, on the webinar, I'm going to be showing you some of the ways that you can quickly get your message into the market, start getting paid with your worth, start building a following that you really want. Uh, you're going to see my recommendation, which you not, nobody's telling you this right now. You're going to see my recommendation, which is to use only one single social media platform. I know you feel guilty. You look at all the five six different platforms that you have available out there to you, YouTube and Facebook and Twitter and LinkedIn and Instagram and Pinterest if you use that. And you're like, come on, what, what am I supposed to do? And most business owners spread themselves thin on this show. I'm gonna show you why my recommendation is to only use one and to go deep on one single social media. You'll see what that means uh, on uh, Thursday as well. Plus I'm gonna have an open Q&A and a time for us to interact uh, live on that Zoom session. If you haven't been on my Zoom meetings before, uh, they are packed with content. We've got about 45 minutes to an hour. I'm going to be jamming a lot in that short period of time. Uh, and you're going to leave with the implementation steps to flat out get it done. All right. So that website is below you. It's edrush.com uh, slash pivot. What's up, Matt? Good to see you as well. Hey, Ron. Good to see you. Um, he said, use your idea about contracting clients and might have opportunity to sell thousands of my books. Man, I love that. That is huge. So congratulations and good job on you for implementing lots of Congratulations coming out of the community on uh, this one. All right, so uh, today we're gonna talk about copywriting. Now, when we get into the to topic of copywriting, there's really two camps, right? There's one camp of people who are like, man, I wanna learn more about this, dig in deep, start reading like the Gary Halbert letters, you know, all the great uh, Eugene Schwartz and like the, the, the greatest sales letter and, you know, go back and, and uh, read from Claude Hopkins, I'm naming some of the advertising greats, you know, uh, and, and, and there's some, there's a group of people like, for example, Michael Fortin, who's on chat right now, who I would consider expert copywriters who know all the people that I was just talking about and have gone deep in those. And then there's another group of people, which is more about 80, 90% of people who are just like, Hey, Ed, just give me the basics and let me get out there and share my message. In other words, you don't want to become a professional copywriter, but at the same time, you want to be able to communicate to your market effectively enough that you draw them into your message. And I'm gonna be speaking to you uh, right now because frankly, most of the people that I work with don't want to spend the next five years becoming a professional copywriter, but you do wanna communicate so that people are attracted to your message. And I will tell you, people always ask me, do I need to be a copywriter? You don't need to be a copywriter, but you do need to understand what good copy looks like. And at the second, second uh, thing is you need to be able to communicate in such a way that it attracts people. And when I say that, what I mean is, extemporaneously, the words that come out of your mouth should be built in a format that attracts people to you, okay? So for the most part, when you hear me communicating on videos, uh, online sales pages, I'm gonna show you some examples uh, as we get going into this series. By the way, this series on copywriting is not gonna be one show, okay? So we're gonna, we're gonna go deep on this at least two days this week, today, and then Thursday. And by the way, uh, tomorrow, you do not wanna miss this show. I'm bringing in my friend, Jonathan Kronstadt. I've known Jonathan for about 12 years. I've known him long before he was the president of Kajabi. But he's the president of a company called Kajabi. Kajabi is, in my opinion, the single best membership site platform on the planet. I'm going to bring Jonathan in and we're going to talk about creating products, creating online products that attract new customers. And look, I'll just tell you, I've sold more, you've heard me say this probably, I've sold more products and online trainings in the last two months than I've sold in the last two years. It's been a big two months for online products. And so, uh, and so if you're not, if you don't have a product that's online, now would be a really great time to start thinking about that. But before you start thinking about that, you have to be able to craft and create a marketing message that's compelling enough that it, it attracts people to you, okay? So on today's show, I'm gonna jump on the whiteboard just a second, uh, and we're gonna talk about, I'm gonna, hey Bruce, good to see you as well. Uh, welcome to the show. I'm going to jump up on the whiteboard and we're going to talk uh, about copywriting. As I do that, um, I'm going to move cameras. And as I do that, check out the screen because you're going to see my cool new bumper uh, for the Big Pivot event. By the way, if you're not scheduled for uh, register for Big Pivot, now is the time. Big Pivot. <laughs> All right, let's talk about how to get your audience to say uh, yes. I thought maybe the video moving from my seat to the board, I thought that would be like a more elegant, like, you know, 
like they do on uh, CNN and Fox News where like, look at this camera, look at that camera. One of these days, I'm gonna have a crew sitting in here, we're gonna be shifting cameras. All right, so let's talk about how to get people to say yes. And for a moment, I'm gonna walk you through the customer journey. What, a, what the customer, uh, what, what their path is like through your business. But before I do that, I wanna go back to something that I taught probably about 30 shows ago, okay? So if, you, if, you are, if you've joined us since show 20, this is gonna, gonna be new for you. But if you haven't, you'll remember that I said one of the most important thing when it comes to marketing, promoting, drawing people into your message is to speak primarily in the second person singular. So you know, there's a whole bunch of different pronoun tenses, right? You've got uh, I, you've got you, uh, you've got he, she, it right here, right? Third person. You've got we, you, and they. Most marketers, when they communicate, choose typically to use uh, first person plural we or second person plural you. So you hear people speaking a lot of times up on the stage and you'll say, you know, one of the things that we do, one of the first things we need to do when we build an opt-in page is we need to do this and we need to do this and we need to do this. And I will tell you for the most part that when you're saying we, uh, you sound weak, okay? Now there's times when I use we, like when I'm talking about my team and I say, hey, when my team and I get to Dallas, we're gonna get in and, you know I mean? Like when I'm, you know, there's a time to use we, but when you're communicating directly to your market, we, in my opinion, is weak. You see this, this happen quite a bit uh, with doctors. You also see, see this happen quite a bit with fitness professionals. Like I'll be working out, like somebody that I paid to work, to work me out and they'll be like, all right, we're gonna take the bar. And I'm like, we're gonna take the bar. I'm gonna take the bar. You're gonna stand there and tell me how to take the bar, but it's not we, it's you, okay? So most people start here. The second place people go is here and, the, and you'll, you'll see this all the time because people are like, hey guys, hey you guys, hey you all, you know, they'll say you all, all right? Now, I don't say guys, or I try not to say guys. The reason I try not to say guys, by the way, is because at least half of the audience uh, that's in my room, sometimes more than half, frankly, it usually is about 55% of my audience are actually women at live events and masterminds and that sort of thing. And if I say, hey guys, that's only half of the room. Okay, now I will say, uh, you, the women speakers sometimes get this worse than anybody. Hey guys, but I just say, hey, you. Okay, I'm speaking directly to you. So when you hear people like, hey y'all, Hey, everybody, it's not everybody, it's you, okay? So primarily, when you're building a marketing message, the very first thing you're thinking about is your prospect. And I'm talking about a single person, okay? So when I work on a new marketing message, so for example, I'm gonna be using, uh, to, on today's show, I'm gonna be using a website as an example, uh, as my sample website, okay? So let me just pull this really quickly up and I'll just show you. When I, I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna uh, share, and by the way, those of you who registered already for um, Ultimate Speaker, you're already registered for Big Pivot, right? But you can see uh, this website, hang on a second. You can see this website right here on the screen, okay? Uh, tomorrow I'm gonna be talking a little bit more about this video and the, the qual qualities on this video, okay? But now, look at this headline right here. See, it says the 2020 crisis has created a massive opportunity that occurs only once every eight years. Give me three days and I'll show you how to exploit it for more profit, more peace of mind, more freedom than ever before. That you right there, that you, that's a singular you. That's important. Remember, this whole website is directly speaking to the prospect. Now, there are times on this website when I'm speaking about a group of people, right? So you can see this, this sub-headline here that says, however, only a small, uh, only a handful of smart individuals, okay, so now this is speaking, this is third person, right? Them, this is third person plural, them, will be able to take advantage of this massive change taking place right now. In an upcoming three-day class, I'll show you how to pivot your business to take advantage of this worldwide revolution and I'll give you actionable strategies you, you can and must implement right now. You can see this entire paragraph, even though it starts out third person, quickly transitions in, into you, okay? Now, um, look at this first paragraph. I believe this is the time, this is the single greatest opportunity the world has ever seen. So I'm starting it with a first person because I'm talking about me, and then I say, and then I'm talking about the world, 
right? Which is typically they, third person plural, and then I shift right back to them. Watch, the global pandemic has completely shifted business and opened up new doors that you can walk through right now for more profit, productivity, and peace of mind, which brings me to you. So my point in bringing this website up, and I'm gonna be bringing, uh, I'm gonna be showing this in a, in a few more different kind of examples. And by the way, Michael Fortin, who's here, uh, was instrumental, in, 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 interestingly, in helping me create the copy in that website. It's really nice to have somebody who knows what they're doing uh, helping you. But if you look at how the website is actually written, there's actually only three different pronoun groupings used. It's I, you, singular, and they. That's it. Uh, every once in a while you'll see one of these sprinkled in there, but only when it's appropriate, like we, my team, or something like that. But for the most part, this is the direction that you're going. And really, when it comes to marketing, this is where you're spending all of your time. Okay? So, for those of you who are coming uh, to Dallas for Big Pivot, one of the exercises I'm going to be leading you through is a market connection exercise. You're going to ask three questions. When you get done answering those three questions, you're going to be able to craft and write a marketing message that is connected directly to your market, which is more important now uh, than ever. The second thing that you're going to do when you get to Big Pivot is I have, gosh, man, this finger fire over here. I have um, this uh, exercise sitting right in front of me called the Offer Creation Toolkit. I'm not going through this on today's show. This is a series of questions. It's actually, I think it's 10 questions. Yeah, 10 questions that when you answer the 10 questions, you literally fill in the blanks of the 10 questions to do what's called creating the perfect offer. See that page, this is page four. It says creating the perfect offer. So at Big Pivot, you're gonna be walking through those 10 questions and creating an offer that magically attracts your market. We're gonna get started on that uh, today on the show, but remember you always start here with you. So I'm looking at writing a new book. Um, I was actually looking at writing a new book back in February, <clears throat> but the world turned upside down and it turns out I'm gonna probably write it in, in July, okay? So, um, but when I, when I was preparing to write my new book, I actually took an airplane, I flew up to uh, Everett, Washington, took a ferry across to one of the islands. I actually went to Whidbey Island. I found a little place, a little town on Whidbey called Langley. I found this beautiful um, little cabin that was actually sitting right over the sound. You could just see the water and the boats just at birds, it was just a beautiful, beautiful spot <clears throat> with windows. About 270 degrees worth of the house had windows all over it. Uh, and I sat there with big flip chart paper that I just picked up at Staples and I actually covered the windows with flip, flip chart paper. And one morning I woke up, I couldn't sleep. I woke up about four or five in the morning and I got up, did a little prayer meditation, kind of got my mind right and wrote on those flip chart papers, my ideal customer, like my ideal market. What do they want? What are they afraid of? What are the things they like? What are the things they don't like? What do they, what do they deep down inside want that they won't tell anybody? What are their perceived obstacles? What are the things getting in their way? If you could get a, ask them, what are the three things that they want more than anything in life? What would those things be? And I literally covered the entire wall with answers to those. It's still sitting right here. I took it and put it into a Google, Google Doc and now I'm working through it. But the point is, when you start with your customer, when you start with your ideal prospect, all of the communication when it comes to your copy will revolve perfectly around that person when you start with them. Now, one of the very things that, first things that I do with my private coaching and consulting clients is you and I sit down and we walk through your marketing messages, opt-in pages, landing pages, websites, any kind of promotional copy or brochures, uh, books, all of the outward facing discussions that you're having with your market. And I will tell you, that by and large, <clears throat> the number one mistake that I see in almost every single person's marketing message is they spend far too much time with this particular pronoun right here. You see when, for example, when you go to somebody's website and they're talking about their, like just their bio of all things, you'll see people who it's like, and then I did this, and then I graduated magna cum laude, and then I went to this school, and then I've got this degree, and then I've got this, and I've got this, and I'm boring boring, boring, boring. And I don't mean to diminish or demean any of the great accomplishments that you have in the world, but unless you're able to take your accomplishments and make a logical bridge between your accomplishments and what it means to the person who's reading your website, it's meaningless for the person reading your website. I mean, truly, I mean this with all of my heart. I think that you've accomplished great things in the world, but your market doesn't care what degree you have. Unless 
you can somehow make a bridge between what you've accomplished and what that means to them. So let me give you an example. I was working once with a doctor uh, and I was paying this person on a, on a, a per visit basis uh, to work on some of the things that, uh, it was just health stuff. It was like vitamins and nutrition and hormones and trying to get um, you know, just more, uh, more uh, energy into the day and just feel great, right? So I was paying this doctor on a per uh, visit basis. And I got a call from her team that said, hey, I don't know if you know this, Ed, but Dr. X just graduated from this new school and got this new degree and this new certification and so our rates are going up. And I said, well, I'm gonna plan on keeping the pay the same rates, but you're welcome to have the doctor call me. So the doctor called. And I said, uh, and she said, well, I just graduated from this uh, thing and therefore I'm raising my rates. And I said, that's fine, but I, I really would just appreciate to pay the old rates. Uh, and she said, well, why would you do that? And I said, well, I said, well, very simple. I said, it's, it's amazing that you graduated from this. This is exactly what I said. I go, it's amazing that you graduated from the school and I just wanna congratulate you for that. But what you haven't done yet is ha you haven't told me what you graduating from this school means to me. What does that mean? Does that mean I'm, I'm going I'm, I'm to be in better shape? Does it mean I'm going to have better access to higher quality supplements? Does it mean that you're going to be able to look at my uh, DNA and be able to see some things that you didn't see before? If, if you're able to show me how this translates into a benefit for me, this is exactly what I said, because I teach this stuff, okay? I said, if you can show me how this translate, it translates into a benefit for me, I'd be willing to discuss new rates, but so far all you've told me is the benefit that's happened to you, okay? Now, I was encouraging her as a uh, in her marketing too, right? So I'm not, I wasn't just being a jerk about it. I was just telling her, look, if you're gonna go out and tell people that you're gonna raise your rates, you better tell people why it's good for them. Otherwise, no one's gonna pay attention to you because everyone listens to their favorite radio station, which is W-I-I-F-M, which stands for what's in it for me, okay? So you're always communicating directly to your prospect, okay? So what I'm going to do is walk you through what a, typical customer journey looks like. And we're gonna to talk together about how you can interface uh, the copywriting strategies that I'm gonna teach you over the next two shows, maybe three, who knows, uh, so that you can engage your prospects, get more people to opt in, have more people on your email list, have more people commenting and liking your videos, uh, engaging more with your copy. Before I do that, I just wanna welcome those of you who just joined us. My name is Ed Rush. This is Copywriting 401, how to engage your audience and get more yeses. Let me jump into chat real quick. Uh, and say hello. Um, so, oh, I thank you, Denise, for the video. I love the music. I'm gonna, I'm gonna just play it again, just because, just because of it. Uh, and Toastmasters, we are taught we. I love this and changing to you singular. Uh, it's way more motivational. Plus, here's the other thing with 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 with. And I said this, by the way, to my um, one of my one of my doctor uh, clients asked, wait a second. I teach when I teach. I say we, but I say you don't do that when you're a doctor. When you're a doc, like when you when you're a doctor. Like, think about this. If you sit down with your doctor and they look at your blood work and they're like, all right, we're gonna need to make some changes here. They say, we first, okay? And then they say, the first thing, Ed, I want you to do is I want you to take this supplement. And the second thing is I want you to start walking an hour a day. And the third thing I want, they say, they say you, because when a doctor's prescribing, they're not like, I want, I want we uh, to take some supplements. That doesn't make any sense, right? When a doctor does that. Like when I'm coaching, one-on-one -on -one with a business owner, I'm not like, you know, I think, I think the first thing that we need to do is, 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 no, it's you. It's here's what I want you to do. Here's what I recommend. Here's what you do. I, do this. This is what I tell my clients. I say, do this. This will work. And it comes to a level of certainty. And again, I'm going to be talking more about certainty over the next uh, few weeks too. Remember what I said uh, the other day, in a, in a certain world, when the world is certain, people get uh, complacent. They start to fall asleep, actually. Literally, they start to become hypnotized and become more like drones. In times of uncertainty, people begin to invest in certainty. That's why as a communicator, it's important for you to speak directly to your audience with certainty, not ambiguity, but with certainty. And if you followed me for the last few months, or the last few years for that matter, you'll know that, that of all the mistakes I make, which are plenty, I'm almost always speaking with a level of certainty. And, the, and, the, and there's a reason for that, by the way. If you want people to go off and change the world, you need to motivate them around certainty. So yes, very important. Um, I'm not, I don't, I'm not trash, gonna trash Toastmasters. I'll just say that was fine for, for the level of speaking that you were at 
when you were with them, but now you're moving into a completely new world, Denise, uh, where you're going to have so much authority when you're speaking up from the stage. Um, I know guys doesn't bother you, but don't forget, you might not be your market, okay? So I messed that up, by the way. You got a great airport there, by the way, Dennis. Um, <laughs> the triple by we need a triple bypass. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's awesome, man. You guys cracked me up. All right. So where was I before I saw, oh, the customer journey. So we're going to talk about how a, a typical customer interfaces with your website, with your marketing message, with your copywriting, with your speaking and where people begin to enter into the process and where they should end up in the process. And again, this is just to lay overlay a foundation for all of the things that we're going to continue to talk about. Eventually, and I'm not sure if we're going to get to this today uh, or on Thursday, but eventually I'm going to take you through this perfect offer. You can see headline, subheadline, introduction, story. It is literally my checklist when I'm writing copy. It's my checklist of all the things that I need to make sure that I do in the order, in the right order. And I'm going to walk you through this document. And then again, when you get to um, Big Pivot, uh, we're going to do this exercise together. You're going to actually fill in the blanks. Once you get clear on your market, remember I said there's three questions. So, so in the morning of day one on Big Pivot, I'm going to take you through the big, th through the transition to purpose exercise. Uh, transition, to, or, or uh, sorry, um, um, pivot to purpose, right? So most business owners pivoted to profit. I'm going to show you first how to pivot to purpose. What that means is we're going to get clear on the very first day of your event what your big what is, the big thing that you're going to accomplish um, in the world. The second thing we're going to do at Big Pivot is identify as closely as possible your ideal market. Okay, that's your market. Then this third thing we're going to do is we're going to begin to create together, right at the event in a, in a workshop style, your ideal marketing message to, uh, to your market. That's all on day one, by the way, of this event. So if you're not registered, you should come. This website is below, by the way, bigpivotevent.com. And yesterday I gave a discount code, which is the word discount. You get 100 bucks off when you register today. That's going to expire this week, so now would be a really great time to register for the event. And by the way, you can attend live or virtually. If you can come to Dallas, come to Dallas. If you can, you're going to get an extra half day of training. You're going to be in a cool community of people. We've almost got 30 people who are going to be live, which is going to be awesome. We're going to have all the safety precautions. Don't worry about Don't worry about the pandemic that everybody's already forgotten about. <laughs> they have, by the way. It's crazy. I was yes, the other day well, I, my wife and I had, had our 17th anniversary this weekend. And on Sunday, I, we went for a walk on the beach. I bet there was like four people out of 400 people that were wearing masks. Everybody sitting on the beach, going about their normal day. We went to a restaurant that night. <laughs> everybody, I think the last two weeks, everybody's like, wait, what? So what, what? Was something about a pandemic? I can't even remember what happened. So don't read into that. If you're, if you're still at home, I think you're great. All right, so... <laughs> oh man, sometimes you have to be careful saying stuff like that. Um, Dennis says, I'm thinking about how to apply this to an about page on a website in the intro before a speech. But if you look at the intro that I gave you at Ultimate Speaker, a lot of that has directly to do with the audience. It has directly to do with what they're going to learn and why they're so smart to, uh, to be there. All right. Um, Cool. Yeah, Mary Jo's coming live, baby. I can't wait. That's going to be awesome. Um, she and her husband are awesome. So um, we have seat, seat separation. It's, it's, it, normally, we have four people that sit at a table. Uh, at this event, due to just distancing, we're going to have two people per table. So you're even going to have more room. <laughs> so Mary Jo, though, you and your husband can sit next to each other. You know what I'm saying? Because like you've been around each other for this whole thing. All right. So let's talk a little bit about the customer uh, journey. All right. And um, I think, Charlie, you asked a question about application of the principles in things like, for example, direct uh, email campaigns. I can talk to you about the actual implementation of that, but what I'll tell you is the mechanics that I'm about to teach you apply in every single uh, example. It's been my experience when it comes to sequential email campaigns that when we first started writing those, we used to have these long campaigns that eventually got around to offering somebody something. Nowadays, typically we get pretty close, 
closely directly to the sale. Again, we can go in more in depth, but if you have any specific questions, questions about that, I'm happy to answer those. Okay, so let's talk about the customer journey. First step in the customer journey is something we, that we call traffic. All right, so when it comes to traffic, what I mean by that is any place that somebody experiences you or your message or your website or your landing page or your offer uh, or your lead offer for the very first time. Traffic sources are unlimited, right? You've got all the social media uh, 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 traffic sources like LinkedIn, YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, um, um, Instagram. You've got all of the social media platforms also for ad traffic. So for example, on LinkedIn, you can do posts on LinkedIn, you can do engagement on LinkedIn like I'm doing, you can grow your following on LinkedIn, but you can also run ads on LinkedIn. I'm actually doing that right now. And this week's weekly flight brief, I'm gonna be talking about a cool new technique that you can use on your videos. I'm gonna be demonstrating that tomorrow. So if you're not on my email list, <clears throat> go to edrush.com and opt in so that at the very least you can get my email tomorrow. I'm gonna to show you a really cool tool, very inexpensive tool, that automatically creates subtitles on your videos, which is very important. Okay, so those are just a couple of examples of traffic. Other ways to get traffic, maybe you're speaking, standing in front of your audience that now they're seeing you. Okay, there's an example of traffic. Uh, another way to get traffic is if you have a, if you have a, a, a brick and mortar <laughs> a, a, a store, someone walks into it. That was originally, by the way, the way that when people describe traffic, that's how people that's what people meant, like traffic into a store. We, used to, we, we started talking about it in terms of uh, online, but traffic is the very first place that somebody uh, gets a, a wind of you, gets a lead of you. Now, I will tell you that there's six steps to the customer journey, but without any traffic, something really bad happens, which is nothing else. So if, if, you, if you don't have traffic, if you don't have visibility, and I'm speaking specifically online right now because that's really where the action's at, but if you don't have visibility, there's nothing else that happens, okay? Which is why one of the first things I do with my private coaching and consulting clients when we figure out who your market is and we ask where they are is we do something very simple called G-I-F-T, which stands for get in front of them. You literally reposition your business to get in front of your market so that all of a sudden now you're visible to them, okay? And it's not an instantaneous process. Um, it's difficult to go from zero to 10,000 views a day uh, from a standing start, but not impossible, especially when you know uh, how to position yourself and your business in the right way, okay? This also comes down to how you build your website. It comes down to how you position your website. I was on the phone yesterday with one of my coaching clients, and when I looked up, I just typed his name right into Google, um, there, was, there was barely anything on the first page. Well, there's some very simple things that you can do with a website and just some traffic into your website that'll, that will um, automatically boost your visibility on something like Google. Again, this is where it starts right in track. And today's show, my, my intention is not to teach traffic, it's just to show you where it is in the online journey. Okay, the second thing that happens is someone becomes a lead. Someone becomes a lead for you when they express an interest in something that you're offering by giving you a piece of their contact information, okay? So for example, some of you have seen this page. It's edrush.com uh, slash free book. So let me uh, pull this up really quickly. And some of you have heard me say that in my opinion, this is the single best, currently I think this is the single best opt-in page that I've got going. I have not seen conversions quite like this. The whole way that the page is laid out with this little box that opens up, instead of the name and the email sitting on the website, this box opens up so that people can put their name uh, and their email in there. It's a very simple page. It's not got stuff flying all over the place. It doesn't have a lot of options. It simply offers my uh, uh, folks a simple uh, yes or no option, okay? That's typically a good start when it comes to lead generation. Lead generation can also, for those of you who are ultimate speaker grads, lead generation can also be you standing up on stage and saying what the script that I taught you last week, remember? The script where I said, you're gonna stand up and you're gonna, oh, by the way, how many of you would be valuable if I Got, we got on the phone this week and I gave you a couple ideas on how you can implement some of the stuff. If that would be you, look, just write your name on your business card, hand me your business card, or write your name and email on a little piece of paper. And if they hand me your business card, and they're like, yeah, I'm interested in following up with you, that's a lead, okay? Somebody who calls in and says, hey, I'm on your website, I'm interested in finding out more, that's a lead. Somebody who uh, gets referred, I, hey, Ed, I wanna tell you about this guy 
who's really interested in your, in your big pivot event. Okay, that's a lead. That referral is a lead. A lead is anybody who's been connected to you that expressed an interest but hasn't paid you yet. That's a lead, okay? Now, remember what I said where I said, look, if, if you don't have traffic, if you don't have traffic coming into your website, nothing else happens. Well, guess what? Same thing here, okay? If you don't have leads coming into your business, you don't have that either. So tomorrow, I'm gonna be interviewing Jonathan Kronstadt, who's the president of Kajabi. Kajabi started out as only a membership platform. All they used to do is host membership sites so that people could go, and then all of a sudden they expanded into more of a, a CRM kind of business. So some of you are asking like, hey, how do I get email leads that can come into my business so that I can email? Kajabi's actually providing that service, okay? So, uh, so that's, that's a lead. They haven't paid you yet, but that's a person who's expressed interest, okay? Now, there's strategies we can talk about in terms of cultivating those leads. Um, typically, for example, let's say you have an email list of a thousand people, all right? So moderately sized email list, and for one month, you don't send anything out to that email list. It's completely dead. Statistically speaking, for every month of inactivity to your list of leads, you typically lose about 10% of them in terms of their attention. Okay, so what that means is what, even though you have 900,000 uh, people, you may actually only have 900 who are now paying attention to you because recency is actually important when it comes to marketing. Look, if you're constantly, you know, every week or so communicating to your marketplace, you've got a little bit more of top of mind awareness. Now, if you're continually communicating, will some people opt out? Yep, some people opt out. Guess what? Who cares? Don't want them anyway. <laughs> I mean it. Look, here's the thing. If somebody's like, I don't want to see the email, they're not going to come to an event. If they're, look, if they don't want an email, they're not going to come to a YouTube show. They're not going to come to an online event. They're not going to buy a, Look, they're not going to, okay? So, if, so I want to pause for a second because sometimes people are like, man, I sent this email out and then I got some unsubscribes. Great, great. What a wonderful way to clean your list from all of the losers who don't want to be connected to you, okay? So look, if you send an email out, and 50% of your list opts out, we got a problem that we need to talk about. You send an email out, 2% of your list opts out, good riddance, I wish you the best, okay? Hey, you don't want them, all right? So don't freak out about that. But my point is that you do need to be in front of your marketplace, and I will tell you, the, the best marketers right now are emailing a lot, they're emailing a lot. You got at least one email from me yesterday, probably two, okay? I got another one coming out tomorrow. No, sorry, I have another two coming out tomorrow and I have another two coming out on Thursday. Okay, you're not gonna get all of them because they're sub lists and sub marketing lists. Okay, and then I got another one on Friday and then another one on Saturday. And look, sometimes you need to just be in touch with your marketplace, that's your lead. Now, the third step in the customer journey is a lead becoming a customer. Okay, now this is a wonderful magic moment because when somebody becomes a customer, there is money attached to, to that. That's the first time that they actually pull out their credit card and invest in something that you have to offer. Or it's the first time that they send you a check through the mail. Or it's the first time you know that they come into your store and buy a new t-shirt or whatever, okay? So this is when somebody becomes a customer and I'm gonna tell you, in this moment, in this exact moment, these, this person becomes statistically about 20 times more valuable to you than that person. What does that mean mathematically? If you gave me an opportunity, like for example, if you said, hey, what would you rather have? Would you rather have a lead list of 20,000 people or would you rather have a customer list of 1,000 people? I'm taking that one. I'm taking that list right there. Not that list, I'm taking that list because the most important people for me are the people who have already demonstrated a willingness to invest in themselves. So. Somebody once asked me, who's your ideal customer for your coaching program? Like my one-on-one -on -one Top Gun coaching program. I work one-on-one -on -one with you uh, on your business for a full year, okay? People are like, who's the best person for that? And I go, if somebody has been in Dan Sullivan's mastermind, if someone's been in Joe Polish's mastermind, if somebody's been in Tony Robbins' platinum group, if somebody's been in, and I could name another 10 different mastermind groups. Look, if somebody's already been in one of those groups, the chances are significantly more likely that they're going to be in my group, okay? The second thing that happens is they begin to become an advocate for you, okay? So I, I've, I've told people this before. I'll be on these webinars sometimes on like Facebook, like we're doing right now, or I'll be on Zoom, and I've got my community there. You know, like for example, this Thursday, 
I'm gonna do this webinar. You got the website for it, by the way. If you don't, if you just joined us, it's edrust.com slash pivot. It's right below me, okay? Boom, elbow right into the thing and everything. Um, so this training that I'm doing on, um, on Thursday, I'll have about two to 300 people that will register for the training. I'll end up with maybe 100, 80 to 100 that will actually show up on the live training. Of the 80 to 100, 30, 30 of you will be people who I know and have been part of this community for some time, all right? So, so people have maybe been through a course or two who've experienced a few of these shows. Maybe we email back and forth. In other words, there's some connection. And like every once in a while, every year, roughly, this happens where somebody out of nowhere, they must have seen an ad someplace. They come onto one of my Zoom, Zoom webinars. And as I'm teaching, you might accurately describe this person as a troll, by the way. As I'm teaching, the person's like, oh, here we go. This is the part where he's going to like sell something. It's all about the money with this guy. And it's like somebody that doesn't even know me, but they just start being negative, okay? You watch. Hopefully this doesn't happen, but when it does, like I said, about once a year, when it does, I don't have to say anything. It's like the entire community. You don't even know what you're talking about. You don't know Ed. You know, like they like dogpile. They dogpile the troll. That's what I'm going to call it from now on. Dogpile the troll. Well, listen, you don't get dogpile the troll unless you have customers who have been in your, in your, um, in your marketing uh, solar system who have experienced the result in their business and their life who are now willing to go out on a limb uh, to support you. And that's why this step is the most important step. Now, Charlie, to your question, because uh, you were asking about email, email sequences. <laughs> Lisa says, I got you. We have your back. I appreciate that. <laughs> um, so when it comes to, <laughs> that's very nice. When it comes to um, your question about emails, it used to be back in the day that we write these long, robust email sequences to, to do what was called lead nurturing. Now, you know what we do? we get them right in. I mean, I'm talking about, I'm not sure, uh, 100% sure, Charlie, what kind of practice you have, but I'm talking like lead to appointment as quickly as possible. I'm talking like ideally that afternoon, okay? Because what we started to realize is that because the world moves so quickly and because the internet is moving so quickly, if somebody's interested in your services, like for example, if you're a dentist and somebody hits your website, if you don't end up getting that appointment that afternoon, they're gonna go boom, 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 boom to like seven other people's websites. And then they're gonna go ask their friend for a referral and next thing you know, they're gonna be at some doctor who's gonna like drill holes in their teeth and not fill them in. I don't know, just using that as an example. My point is sometimes it's like you have to get them in even faster, okay? And so that's why oftentimes this journey that the, that the, uh, that the person takes uh, to become your customer actually happens a lot quicker nowadays than it used to. This is good news for you, by the way. Okay, steps four, five, and six really quickly. Uh, I'm gonna move through quickly, and then I'm gonna lay out the foundation for what we're gonna do tomorrow, answer some questions, and then we're gonna roll. And by the way, if you have any questions on anything that I'm covering right now, throw it in the chat. Just put the word question, and I'll uh, make some time to answer that. Now, step four is actually where the magic all happens. I remember I, remember I said step three. Step three is really where, really where the good stuff, that's only where the good stuff starts. Okay, step four is where the magic happens, and this is a, what's called a lifetime customer. Mike Semmel said this yesterday, he was joking. He said, I know that I'm a lifetime customer of Ed because I list him as a dependent on my tax return. <laughs> Mike and I, I think it's our fourth year together that we've been working uh, in coaching, and to Mike's credit, he's, he's one of the fastest implementers that I know. He's, I mean, he's coming on Ed Talks, by the way. Uh, we're going to do an interview. He's, he's formed a, inc carved out an incredible niche uh, for himself in the HIPAA uh, world, but he's more than that. And, and, and when I'm talking about Mike, this is what I'm talking about, okay? You have people, there's people, like for example, there was a, a, a person, it's about 10 years ago, a marketer that I was following, who essentially everything he put out, I signed up for. I was in the mood to really learn and to really grow. And by the way, this person ended up becoming a friend of mine uh, later on, uh, but I'm talking like every offer that came out, I'm like, I'm in. And I did that for like two years. And I remember one day, this, this guy sent a sales letter, it was actually through the mail, a sales letter. And in the sales letter, it had a form, this is back when people used faxes. It was like 10 years ago. I don't even think people were using faxes that much back then, but I had one. Uh, and I, I read the sales letter and it had a, fa a form in the middle of it uh, that, was, that you could fill out and fax in. And I kid you not, I got the sales letter 
I put the sales letter aside, I took the form, I filled it in and I sent it in. And as I was sending the thing in, and it was like a thousand dollar product. As I was sending the thing in, I thought, I don't even know what it is I'm sending in. I just know this person so well to know that when they offer something, it's gonna be good and I should be there. And I literally sent the form in, okay? I ended up speaking at the person's events and uh, anyway, becoming a, a big part of the, the community, but it started with me becoming a customer and then becoming a lifetime customer, right? Now, the way to build lifetime customers, two steps. Number one, under promise and over deliver. Hopefully you caught that. Under promise and over deliver. 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 By rule as a business owner. First of all, you need to fulfill your promises, okay? So if you say you're gonna do something, you do it. But my simple rule is, look, I always want people to get more than they bargain for. So there isn't a single product or event that someone signs up for that they don't get along the way like, whoa, that's cool. I didn't even know that I was getting that. Okay, and it's built directly into the business because when you under-promise and over-deliver, what you're doing is something different than almost everyone else that does out there, which is most people, like have you seen like the thousand YouTube pre-roll ads that like, you're like, hey, I wanna show you how I went from like zero to eight figures and you're watching the video and you're like, whatever, dude. I can guarantee you, most of the people that you see those are the over-promise, under-deliver people, right? If you're watching something and you're like, man, this is too good to be true. It's too good to be true. Okay, and you and I have both signed up for stuff before where you're like, man, that was very underwhelming. Okay, so rule number one is under promise and over deliver. Under promise and over deliver. Now, rule number two, you might be surprised at me saying, which is make more offers. You can't get lifetime customers if all you offer is one thing. Okay, so one of the things I do with my private coaching and consulting clients is you and I sit down and we come up with your core offer. That's the main thing that you're gonna put out into the marketplace. Could be an event, okay? Could be a Zoom webinar, could be some sort of online product, whatever that core offer is. But from that, you will almost always have extensions of new offers that you can provide. So let me give you an example. Last week, we were talking uh, on Ultimate Speaker, and I said during Ultimate Speaker, two different times, I said, you know, I'm thinking about maybe doing an event a consulting event where I teach you all my consulting stuff, give you all my forms and scripts and agreements and everything that I do to get consulting clients. And I take you through all my delivery, all the emails that I use and how my team manages back end stuff with the clients. It'd be like a two to three day event, more like a workshop. And when you come to this, I've done these by the way before, where people were, people were getting deals during the training. <laughs> so I have a video, I should find it and pull it up. I have a video of a guy who's like, man, I had like a $5,000 deal while I was in the training. It's crazy, okay? So I said, hey, I think I might do that. And a whole bunch of the ultimate speaker, people were like, man, I'm in if you do a consulting event. And then later on, I was talking about the importance of books. And I said, you know, if I did an author event, how many of you would be interested in that? A whole bunch of people said, yeah, I would be interested in doing an author event. Now those are most likely my next two events after Big Pivot. I'm probably gonna do an author event. I'm probably gonna do a speaking or a, um, a consulting event. By the way, if you're registered for Big Pivot, and I make the offer there, you're gonna get a good deal. You always get a better deal at the event than you do anywhere else, all right? So another reason to <laughs> get on Big Pivot. Now, my point is to create lifetime customers, you actually need to have more than one offer, right? Because I'll tell you, there are people like, like for example, Jim Butts, who's in chat right now. Um, Jim came to one of our author events back in like 2013, Jim is, brilliant when it comes to books. No matter how amazing my author event is, Jim's not coming to my event as a attendee. He already got it all, okay? And so and so and so there are what I'm here to tell you is that's why you have multiple different offers because there may be another event like Big Pivot that Jim would be perfect for, okay? So when you're building lifetime customers, a lot of times you're going to have you're going to have um uh, multiple offers that flow naturally from your first offer. That's how you build lifetime customers. By the way, I think Charlie asked, uh, when are you doing those next two events? So, uh, <laughs> send me the order for him. <laughs> That's great. 2014. Come on, man. Um, thank you, Anita. What a wonderful thing to say. You, you said something very nice to me at the end of Ultimate Speaker. I really appreciate that. I remember that stuff, man. That means a lot to me. In fact, Anita, I told my, after that event ended, I went up and had lunch with my wife and I told her exactly what you said. That's how much it meant to me. You do do nice testimonials for me, man. If you look at my 21 Day Miracle page, you'll see Jim's uh, testimonials. So, 
Um, so dates, so I'm tentatively looking at August, September for one, and then October, November for the second one. So Charlie, what I was planning on doing, uh, full disclosure. So what I was planning on doing is actually setting the dates for both events. And then for big pivot uh, attendees, I was actually gonna give, do a two for one, where you get basically both events uh, for the price of one, and then I was gonna build sales pages for both of them and make them um, uh, for um, essentially one, pr this price for one, this price for one, but when you do both, or if you wanna do both, you get them both uh, for one price, which I thought would be really great, okay? Um, the book event's more expensive for me to produce because when I do book events, typically, we create covers, uh, we do some work like take pictures and stuff like that. So it's a little bit more uh, work, but who knows? All right. So number five and number six, I'll do quickly. And then I'm going to get, take your questions. Number five uh, is to uh, create lifetime customers who refer. Uh, number six is to create lifetime customers who write reviews. Okay. So for example, right now, Jim just said this, which is really, really true. Um, like take a look at this. I'll, I'll just pull this up. It's going to take me a second, but, um, but if you look, for example, this is my 21 day miracle book page. When I launched this book, I've shown you this before, but when I launched this book, um, uh, one of the very first people, and I didn't even ask him to do this, by the way, I, I would have, uh, this is August, 2017. So I, I published the book in July of 2017. And this is Jim's uh, review of 21 day miracle. It's still, look at this for real. First of all, it's the number one review. So it's the first thing people see. When people come to my website, look at that. 86 people, 86 people found this helpful. That's amazing, right? So that's the first review that comes up is this very detailed review, which is important by the way that people do. Look at how detailed this review is. Incredible, right? Um, and 81, 86, so this is, this is like, I mean, I don't know how many other extra books I've sold because of that one uh, review that's sitting there, but I'll bet you it's a lot because it's the first one that shows up and great customers do reviews. Now, you have to ask, but I will tell you, Jim's been around long enough to know, we always ask, like he, he asked for, the, for his books, you know what I mean? So we always ask, your, 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 your lifetimers, you always say, hey man, I'm publishing this book, do me a favor, flip through it on Kindle and then write me a review. And I always ask, I say, could you just write me a four or five star review? <laughs> That's what I ask, because I don't want them all be five. I don't want them to be all like 100 five star reviews because it looks fake, I just give me a couple four. Uh, four and fives. Okay, and great, great customers refer. So that's the uh, general gist of where we're going today. I'm going to jump over to the center camera, answer some questions, uh, and then we're going to wrap up uh, for um, for today. I like this, by the way. This is very cool. So here's what we covered today. Let me talk about what we're going to cover tomorrow, and then again, I'm going to take your questions. I I, I don't think I missed any, uh, but but um, Charlie, I'll go a little bit deeper on your question about email. If I don't get any other questions, we can cover that. All right. So first of all. Gina's like, consulting event, I'm there. Um, when I do the consulting events, like I said, usually around the lunch of day one, I have a text message, I call it the six-figure text message, that when you send it out, it's almost always guaranteed to get you interest, and usually you can get a client out of it, a pay, paid client, by the way. Um, and usually we do that on the morning of day one or day two, and I've, I've actually literally, out of, at my events, one of my last events, um, it was hysterical because I had someone send out the six-figure text message. And I, I want to back up to the stage, and I was teaching. And she goes, there's like 80 people at this event, by the way. And in the middle of me teaching, she goes, I could, in like row four in the middle over here, all of a sudden she goes, oh my gosh! Like in the middle of the event, <laughs> she screams, oh my gosh! And I go, what? What happened? She goes, I got, I got a reply. Someone replied. And I, in the middle of the event, I walked over and took her phone and together we responded to the person who responded back and, and she got the client. <laughs> so, so it's fun when that happens that way. It doesn't always happen that way, but we had actual people getting actual, actual clients uh, that were actually at the event, which is pretty cool. All right, so um, I'm gonna wrap up today. So today we talked, we just started talking about copywriting, focusing on second person singular, talking directly to you, not so much talking about I or we or they. Okay, we went into a longer discussion of the customer journey, and it's important for us to start with that because when you go back to copywriting, it's not so much sequential. It's more like you start with the benefits, right? But then from the benefits, you write a headline, which is the first thing that comes up. So on Thursday, I'm gonna walk you through, and I can guarantee you I'm not gonna get through all of it, so this might be three, but I'm gonna walk you through 
what I consider the perfect offer. This is inside of my little tool uh, called the Offer Creation Toolkit. Now, those of you who are an Ultimate Speaker, you, you got to see maybe one or two of my tools. At Big Pivot, you're gonna see a whole lot more. So I've got, uh, one of the things I love to do is to create exercises uh, that you can do on your own after an event. So it's one thing, some of you know different teaching styles, right? It's one thing to stand up and just teach for three days. The only problem with that is the retention rate or the implementation rate is often really low if you just teach. It's the reason why our school system and especially our university system is so screwed up because most of it's based on lecture lectures where you just sit and listen to people talk. And so uh, my normal live events, it's teaching combined with exercises combined with feedback, right? So on the morning of day one, I'm gonna teach and then I'm gonna take you through exercise number one. The more, second session in the morning of day one, I'm gonna teach again, take you through another exercise. But the cool thing is, is the exercises that I'm gonna teach you, lead you through at Big Pivot, I'll put the link up again. Um, come to this training if you're not coming to it, it's on Thursday. The, the exercises that I'm gonna take you through at Big Pivot um, are designed so that you can take them home and you can use them anytime you wanna create a new offer. So for example, when I'm creating a new offer, I take my old, my own thing out and I start going through it and I'm like, what is it the person wants? What are the big obstacles? And I ask myself the same questions so that I can get to a great uh, result, okay? So let me see if there's any other questions. Uh, Marcus says, I love that texting story with the audience member kind of going, <laughs> it's so great, man. Oh man, that was really great. Yeah, so Linda, who's in the education world, says lecture yields only 10% retention. Yeah, so it's interesting, Linda, and you've seen some of the exercises that I've done at my events. People will listen, they'll be like, all right, I got it. You know, and I'm like, how many of you that make perfect sense are like, hoorah, and then we do the exercise, and the first question I'll get is something like, hey, Ed, what's a benefit? And I'm like, oh man, I'm so glad we did the exercise, because th that question wouldn't have come out unless it was because of the exercise. So when you actually start to put pen to paper, it turns retention from like 10% to about 90%, and then when you take it in, into implementation, retention goes to 100%. Uh, Arthur says, can you recommend the best software to start my lead capture site to start my consulting biz? Yes, so the first thing is I would consider LinkedIn as your primary source uh, for, uh, uh, for traffic. I'm not 100% sure what the consulting topic, topic is, but I'm spending quite a bit of time on LinkedIn. Uh, tomorrow on the weekly flight brief, I'm gonna be demonstrating a new tool that I'm using to create videos on LinkedIn, and I'm not gonna do it tomorrow, but probably Thursday, I'm gonna show you uh, how I'm creating videos in uh, LinkedIn and how I, I have a cool new tool that I'm gonna show you that automatically creates subtitles for videos because like 85% of people watch videos on, uh, on mute. So uh, you didn't ask this, but LinkedIn is a great lead generation source for you. Uh, and then tomorrow, listen to the discussion with Jonathan Kronstadt and Kajabi, the two, uh, the two platforms I currently use in my business, well actually there's three now, but the two platforms I use to, get, to, do, to generate leads in my business, a fly just flew right up into my face. So the two platforms are Kajabi and the second platform is ClickFunnels. Okay, so for example, this page uh, right here, see where it says this, this Ed Rush page? This was created in um, uh, inside of ClickFunnels. This page here, if you go to edrush.com slash bonus, this page is my book bonus page. This page was created out of Kajabi, okay? You can actually see it right here, mykajabi.com. So I use Kajabi for lead generation, and I also use ClickFunnels for lead generation. The benefit to Kajabi, which is the reason why I'm gonna do an interview with, with um, Jonathan tomorrow, the benefit to Kajabi is you also have the membership platform built onto the back of it. Uh, and and uh, wait till tomorrow to try it out because I, don't, I haven't talked to him about this, but usually when he comes on with me, he has some sort of bonus that he throws in. So if you're gonna try Kajabi, wait till tomorrow uh, for two reasons. One, he'll probably give you something extra, but the second reason is I'll have my affiliate link by then. <laughs> I think it's actually edrush.com slash Kajabi and you might as well buy from me because it's the same price. Um, yeah, so Diana, I only usually do my videos on my personal page. Uh, but yes, if you have it on there, uh, do that. And then the only other question I saw here was from Charlie who said, will you be covering follow-up emails for online marketing and how to write copy for those sequential email campaigns? Okay, so really quickly, Charlie, my typical uh, technique for writing a follow-up email campaigns is what I call CCTP, content, content, testimonial pitch, content, content, testimonial pitch, content, content, testimonial pitch. So I like to send, obviously, content out to your list. Every email can't be a, 
a, a like buy this or buy this or buy this or buy this. So usually what I do is I'll send out emails that have content with them. But oftentimes, just so you know, the content does at, at times have in the bottom or the PS like an offer to go over to another page. Uh, so for example, tomorrow, my weekly flight briefing email uh, will have, it's full of content, links and resources and teaching. But inside the email, I still like, hey, sign up for tomorrow's webinar if you come. Okay, so, uh, so usually, and so it's content, content, testimonial. Oftentimes in the emails, writing a success story about a patient that you've had with no real offer to it, but just a story or playing the video of someone's story, right? So for example, um, on my Ed Rush coaching page, so let me share my screen again real quick. We'll just go a little bit longer. I, I got, I'll share this and then, and then you'll see it. So on my Ed Rush coaching page, you gotta go there, Charlie, to see it. Uh, and I do recommend checking out this page and watch this video. So when you watch this video, I know the sound isn't gonna work on this, by the way. When you watch this video, you'll see there's some success stories from people inside the video, coaching members, I don't even know the sounds on. Hang on. There we go. What to do by surrounding myself with high level entrepreneurs and different thought leaders from around the world. I've been able to grow my business to hit seven figures. This so year. there's a results based testimonial. So that would be an example. Uh, I don't know if you heard it, but she said I, she went from basically having no money at all to seven figures. The video right before hers is uh, somebody who grew their business by 40%. Those are results based testimonials. So I like putting those in the email sequences. Uh, and then uh, finally, what I call p a pitch email. There's nothing wrong with it. It's, I know the word pitch sounds a little squirrely, but a pitch email is essentially you getting your, your uh, product offer in front of your marketplace. And lately, these days, I prefer to do most of the offering on Zoom. So what I'll do is I'll bring people to a content-based webinar like I'm doing this Thursday and then make the offer on Zoom. And that seems to be working. Remember I said there's really three ways that I'm getting leads. Zoom is actually the other way. So for example, I already gave you this website, but if you go to edrush.com slash pivot, I'll share my screen one more time. This is edrush.com slash pivot. This is actually connected to Zoom. So when people put their name and email in here, it actually registers them, Charlie, in Zoom. Then it, it puts them on my email list too, which is actually in Infusionsoft. So hopefully that explains uh, your uh, you, that and it looks like it looks like I when I said dentist I was right about that <laughs> I think I thought that was you so uh, Marcus says if you put a lot of exercise in your event does that mean you don't need as much content I'm daunted by creating enough content for a three-day event by the way if you are so Marcus I've done this long enough I, I could do like a 20-day event I, I think I have actually for crying out loud so um, so content's not a huge issue for me I could I could keep going and going and going and going actually the the exercises are a challenge for me. My normal teaching style is not exercise based. I'm more Socratic, so I like interacting and, and probing into people's questions and problems. The exercises were created for two reasons. Uh, number one, I wanted to, people to be able to walk away with things they could use in their business after I was gone. Um, I have a philosophy about teaching that's different than most people in the information marketing, teacher, coach, guru world. Most people, boy, this is an important point. Most people in the, in the um, information marketing world preach independence, but breed dependence. Here's what I mean by this. They teach like, you can do it, go off and be your own person. But the way that they create their systems, they're, they create people who are dependent, completely dependent on them for every single answer in their business. That is not anywhere close to the way that I wanna run my business. I have coaching members who work with me for a year or two and go off and create great things and I'm so proud for them uh, and I'm just glad that I could have been part of their journey, right? So I'm not the kind of person that like, there's people who if you don't sign up for their mastermind every year, they get upset, I'm not that person. I'm happy to interface with you in your business when it's important for you and in critical times and then to see you really take off and fly, okay? So I created the exercises to be able to, to breed independence, to preach independence, but also breed independence. And I also created the exercises because down the road, I'm, I'm planning on creating a certification program in my business where I train people like you to be like Ed Rush, Ultimate Marketer certified so that you can go off and do this uh, stuff for people on your own. All right, a couple more questions. Uh, Bruce says, since you're focused on LinkedIn, do you have a strategy you recommend to follow? 
Start with tomorrow's weekly flight briefing email and I'm gonna be going a little bit deeper on this in the next few weeks. Yeah, it's good, it's good, he's right about that. Yeah, Zoom has its own lead capture. So if you actually go to Zoom, I'll pull it up. It's just gonna take me a second because I have to log in. Uh, if you go to Zoom, like for example, Zoom actually creates a registration page. Hang on. All right, here I'm gonna share my screen now. This is the page that Zoom creates. You got your banner up here and it's got uh, the copy and then first name, last name, email, confirm email. So the most, it's a, it's a very basic form, no problem if you use it. I use it for years and years, so don't feel like what I'm about to tell you should stop you from that. I didn't love it in terms of the look and feel and I really didn't like the fact that they asked for two email, the email to be confirmed. And so simply what I did, Arthur, is I just had my team embed the code for this, uh, for this thing onto one of my own pages. So essentially this is Zoom, this is a Zoom webinar and the leads are actually going into Zoom but I created a, a, my separate page. And that's a little bit more advanced marketing stuff. I wouldn't necessarily, uh, uh, um, I wouldn't necessarily recommend that um, out of the gate, but yeah, you can create, so the moment you create a webinar in Zoom, webinar, webinar, not a, um, a, a meeting. So the moment you create a webinar in Zoom, it creates a landing page that people can go opt into. So it is a good, uh, a good lead generation. Thank you, Denise. You reminded me, Denise sent me an email and asked me about something like this and it reminded me We've been planning for like three years to, to create this certification program. I just haven't, I haven't pulled the trigger on it yet. Um, I guess it's because I'm always learning new things, but I guess we could teach that to the certified people as well. All right, so without any further ado, hey, website below, if you haven't registered for the uh, webcast this week, by the way, you may be registered for Big Pivot. You can be registered if you sign up for it. You can be registered if you're already an ultimate speaker attendee from last time because you know that was a bonus to the ultimate speakers. Uh, if you are, please let my team know if you're coming live or digital. Uh, but if not, register for this. The uh, webinar is on Thursday, uh, and I'm going to give you a great deal for, uh, for the Big Pivot event, which you're going to want to attend live or virtually. It's in two weeks, by the way. Two weeks from today, I'm flying into Dallas. My daughter, 15-year-old Faith Rush, is coming in to work the back table with Meredith, too, so one more reason to come into Dallas. All right? So we are going to wrap up today's show. Don't forget, tomorrow, my man Jonathan Kronstadt's coming on. We're going to talk about online products that flat out rock listen you have a mission a vision a passion to change the world and the mechanics i'm teaching today are simply the means for you to get there i know we kind of went deep on some of that copywriting stuff but listen take one of the things that i'm teaching today go off and implement it see the result start building your list start getting some customers and start changing the world i'll talk to you tomorrow thanks again for your time and attention i love you and i like you ed talks live is out